Like I say, man, y'all gotta bear with me, man. I'm kind of I'm sickly right now. But, man, it says, uh, this John chapter 6, verse 39. And this is the Father which, will which had sent me, that of all which had given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last days. And this is... And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life. And I will raise him up at the last day. So, reading that, what it is is the Heavenly Father is going to raise up the men to teach, and they're going to raise up the elect, which is part of the men that's teaching. So his spirit gonna be the only elect, okay, of the nation of Israel. And I read that again, right? So he putting his spirit in the elect of the nation of Israel, right? This John, <clears throat> let me go. Y'all bear with me. I got me some, I got me some tea out here. Again, this John chapter 39, I mean John chapter 6, verse 39. And this is the Father's will which had sent me, that of all which had he had given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. Verse 40. And this and, and this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life. And I will raise him up at the last days. Verse, uh, verse 41, right? Verse 41. And the Jews then murmured at him because he said, I am the bread which cometh down from heaven. So when you read back up, that's what it that's what it's referring to. How they coming against me. You know what I'm saying? Running their mouth and stuff. You know, uh verse 41. It said, and the Jews then murmured at him because he said that I am the bread which cometh down from heaven. Verse 42. And they said it is not it, and they said is not this Yahweh the son of Joseph whom father and mother we know so they knew that Joseph was a biological father of Yahweh on earth they knew that back then man so Joseph and Mary they did have sex contrary to pop belief how is how is it then that he said I come down from heaven question they didn't understand. Verse 43. Yahweh Shah therefore answered and said unto them, Murmur not among yourselves. Verse 44. No man can come to me except the Father which had sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last days. Verse 45. It is written in the prophets and they shall be all taught of the power every man therefore that had heard and had learned of the father cometh unto me verse 46 not that any man had seen the father saving he which is the power saving he which is of power he had seen the father Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth upon me hath everlasting life. Verse 48, I am, the, I am that bread of life. So, 
You have to believe in Yahweh Shah and he was going to put the spirit in. Once the Father draw you to Yahweh Shah to believe in him, he wasn't, he wasn't going to lose none of the elect and his spirit was going to be on the elect of the nation of Israel, the second Adamites. Okay? Okay? Now I said the second Adamites for a reason. Okay? The second Adamites. Okay? So, the spirit is going to be having that faith and believing in the house of Shai. That was going to be in the second Adamites. Right? It's a demon. Bugged out, man. You know? That spirit is going to be in the second Adamites to believe in Yahweh Shai. Right? Let me check something. Y'all bear with me. Alright, that spirit was going to be the, the spirit believing in Yahweh Shah was going to be in the second Adam Mike. And doing the will of the Heavenly Father was going to be in the second Adam Mike. Okay? The spiritual, they got the, they got the spirit of Yahweh Shah in them. That was going to be in the second Adam Mike. So, to prove this, I'm going to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse uh, 22. Right? Let me go here. 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22. Who had also sealed us and given the earnest of his spirit in our hearts, meaning our minds. So through the most high was going to put the spirit on us, right? To be in the spirit of the second Adam. And the second Adam is uh, living by faith, becoming a new man, okay? That's the second Adam's uh, uh, life. He becomes a new man and he and he lived through faith, believing in Yahweh Shem Shah. Even Eve, okay, is part of the Adamites. So the woman is going to live towards uh, Yahweh Shai, okay? She's going to become a new woman and live towards Yahweh Shai, all the Adamites. So the Adamites, which are Israelites, okay, is living towards Yahweh Shai, uh, believing in him, okay, to get to the power, okay, through faith. All right, so I'll read that again. This is 2 Corinthians. Chapter 2, I mean, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22. Who had also sealed us and given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts, meaning in our mind. So we believe in Yahweh Shemel Shah through faith, right? According to the scriptures. So I'm jumping around, right? We're going to jump. Now, this is the now, what I'm finna start going into, once, once you repent and you be raised up to believe in your help by Shemel Shah, this is the condition that you're going to go through while you, well, this is some of it, the condition that you're going to go through when you believe in your help by Shemel Shah and you repent, okay? It's like it's a war between, uh, the first Adam and the second Adam. So it's a war. It's like a war between the, the first Adam and the second Adam. So you got a war within your mind that's going on while you uh, serving Yahweh Shema Shah, and you got to bob and weave through all these demons, right? And two thirds which is the which which is in the first state of uh, Adam? They ain't even made it to the second Adam because Yahweh Shemel Shai put the spirit on them to believe and 
to believe to fight. So you gotta bob and weave through all that. And this is the condition that you going through when you repent and come back to your house by Shalom and shine, serve him in truth and sincerity when they put their spirit on you to repent and serve him, right? So, I go to second, uh, second Ezra, right? Let me go to second Ezra. Second Ezra chapter. Y'all bear with me, I gotta get, I gotta drink some more tea. Y'all bear with me. This is uh ah. all right now remember this is a this is a transition now when you wake up to this truth you repent it you know what I'm saying y'all about your mouth shot chose you he poured his spirit on you and now you up, right? And you believe in Yahweh by Shemel Shai, you awake. Now, this is the condition, this is the battle right here, right? This is Second, second Ezra chapter seven, verse uh, one, all right? This is, uh, and this is uh, Ezra talking to the angel concerning uh, the future of the nation of Israel. Cause he was asking questions when you read concerning Ezra. He wanted to know how everything was going to turn out. Okay? So, this is 2nd Ezra chapter 7, verse uh, 1. And when I had made an end of speaking these words, there was sent unto me the angel which had been sent unto me the night before. Verse 2. And he said unto me, Up Ezra, and hear the word that I am come to tell, tell thee. Verse 3. And I said, Speak on my power. Then said he unto me, The sea is set in a wide place, that it might be deep and great. But the entrance, I mean, verse 4. But put the case. The entrance were narrow and like and like a river. So this entrance is narrow like a river, right? Verse 5. Who then could go into the sea to look upon it and to rule it? Question. If he went not through the narrow, how can he come into the into the into the broad, right? Verse 6, there, there is also another thing. A city is built and set upon a broad field and is filled of all good things. Verse 7, the entrance therefore is narrow and is set in a dangerous place to fall like as, like as if there were were a fire on the right hand and on the left a deep water verse 8 and, and one only path between them both even between the fire and the water so small that, that there could but one man go there at once so he's telling you he's symbolically telling you about the the entrance into the kingdom of heaven, right? Into eternal life. So that's what he's telling you, okay? And it says the, the entrance is so narrow that only one man can go through there at once. That's why the scripture tell you, you gotta work out your own salvation with fear and trembling because the path that you own 
is your path and it's narrow and it's you that's gonna have to walk that path. Nobody else can walk that path for you. You can pray to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh to strengthen you and, and ask him to, uh, through faith, to ask him uh, to cause you to endure. But through all these uh, dangerous times, but it's, it's, it's you that got to work out your own salvation. Okay? Nobody else. It says, uh, verse 9, if this city now were given unto a man for inheritance, if he never shall pass through danger set before it, how shall he receive this inheritance? Verse 10, and he said, it is so, Lord. Then said he unto me, even so also is Israel portion. So, when you wake up to this truth, and Yahweh Shemal Shah put the spirit on you, this vain world and this and this and these dangerous, uh, this vain and dangerous world that you in, uh, this is the portion that you're going to have to go through in order to receive the kingdom of heaven, man. Right? So you got a battle between the first Adam and the second Adam, and you got a battle dodging all these people and two thirds, and you got a battle uh, going back to the first Adam and the second Adam in your mind, man. Right? So, Looking at all this, looking at all this, this is the condition that Negro, Latinos, and Native Americans are facing, including the elect. Okay? This is the condition. It says, uh, it says, verse 10, and he said, and he said it, and he said, verse 10, and I said, it is so, Lord. Then said he unto me, even so also is Israel portion. Okay? Verse 11. Because for their sake I made the world. And when Adam transgressed my statues, then was decreed, decreed that now is done. So when Adam listened to the woman, and the woman took on the philosophies outside of the statute of the commandments. This battle and this uh, that we grow, go through, dodging these people, Esau ruling, everything. This is a Israel portion, right? You know? It says, uh, That's when that decree was set, man. That's when that decree was set. Look, Israel gonna have to catch hell and go through all this before they receive the kingdom, man. That's just kind of of this world made narrow talking about the kingdom full of sorrow and travail and they are but few and evil full of pearls and very painful so in order for us to get to the kingdom of heaven these are the conditions Mike. I read it again while you battling in your mind you know trying trying through the spirit 
not to let the uh, belief, not let the, this flesh consume you uh, in this world to where you lose faith in Yahweh Shema Shai, man. Why will they dismantle this light is green, man. I don't even know that the light is green. They're playing the music with its windows down, then the deep and the light is green. <laughs> and that's a Jake listening to that confused, confused music, right? Yeah. I don't know if my chicken bloodline. <laughs> I don't know if my chicken bloodline. Oh boy. This is the uh, second Ezra, chapter 7, verse 12. Then was the interest of this world made narrow, full of sorrow and travail, that are but few and evil, full of pearls and very painful. Verse 13. For the interest of the elder world, the elder world is talking about the uh, kingdom of heaven. Well, why ensure and brought immortality, fruit, because the Adamites was in the kingdom of heaven before they failed, man. Before they disobeyed the statute of the commandment. They was there, but they failed, man. Okay? The first Adamites. I read it again. It says, for the interest of the elder world were wide and sure and brought immortal fruit. Verse 14. If then they that live labor not to enter these straight, meaning difficult, and vain things, they cannot, they can never receive those that were that are laid up for them. Verse 15. Now therefore, why disquieted thyself, seeing thou art but a corruptible man? Because what Ezra was doing was getting upset and getting emotional, man. Okay? That's what he was doing when he was hearing the uh, angel speak about uh, concerning Israel, what was going on with Israel, okay? And what they had to go through. He was getting emotional. Right? And it says, uh, verse 15, Now therefore, why disquiet, disquiet thyself, seeing thou art but a corruptible man? Right? Meaning he would die. And why art thou moved, whereas thou art but mortal? Verse 16, Why hast thou not considered in thy mind these things that is to come rather than that which is present because that's what our people would do man you know they think about things that are present not you know what I'm saying the things that's to come man that's what our people would do and that's why the angel was uh, rectifying Ezra's concern in that you know he said why are you why are you thinking about the things that's present man why are you Worried about that, man. You be thinking about the future, man. The kingdom, you know. Verse seventeen. Then answered I and said, O Lord, that that bears rule, thou hast ordained thy law, that the righteous should inherit these things, but that the ungodly should perish. So this is this is this is what Evan was speaking on. He said the righteous gonna inherit the kingdom, but the wicked gonna perish. You know. Verse 18, nevertheless the righteous shall suffer straight things, difficult things, and hope for the why. Because when Adam transgressed, this was a decree, man, that even the righteous gonna have to go through these things on the earth in order to receive the kingdom of heaven. So you got the first Adamite, okay? Then you got the second Adamite, Second Adamite is uh, 
The second Edomite got the spirit of Yahweh Shemal Shah in them, but they still battling with the first Adamite within their body. But two thirds just got the uh, first Adamite in them, and they don't even believe in Yahweh Shah like that. But the second Adamites are spiritual, so they battling with the second Adamite that's within them in their mind, man. You see? Okay? So, I'll read that again. It says, verse 18. Second Ezra chapter 7, verse 18. Nevertheless, the righteous shall suffer straight things and hope for why? For they... Let me read that again. A and C. It says, Nevertheless, the righteous shall suffer straight things and hope for the why? For they... For they that have done wicked, wickedly have suffered the straight thing and yet shall not see the why. So our people, even though, see, you got you got the you got the Israelites, which are the first at uh you got the Israelites, which are the first Adamites and the second Adamite. But you got the the the, the second Adamites uh suffering, and you got the first Adamites that suffer, and our people don't uh, and our people that's two thirds they just going to suffer and not even see, receive the kingdom they don't understand nothing but the second Adamites they uh, understand and growing in Yahweh Shem and they got a bob and weave in order to see, receive the kingdom of heaven but the first Adamite they don't, they don't know nothing they just catching hell they don't know why they catching hell they don't even know why they here they don't even know what's going on concerning this Bible okay This uh, verse 18 again. Nevertheless, the righteous shall suffer straight things and hope for the why. For they that have done wickedly have suffered the straight things and yet shall not see the why. Two thirds ain't gonna see the kingdom like that. They're gonna have to be destroyed and be born back in the kingdom again. Okay? Through uh, sex. Verse 19. And he said unto, unto me, there is no judge above the power, and none that understandeth above the highest. So the most high knows, you know, uh, I say this right here. The reason why he told him that is because the wisdom of Yahweh Shemal is higher than man. So he know how to judge. So that's why the angel is telling Ezra that. I'll read it again. It says, verse 19, And he said unto me, There is no job above the power, meaning the most high, and none that have understanding above the highest. So Yahweh Shemal Shah got wisdom out of this world, man. He know how to judge, man. Yahweh knows how to judge, man. Yahweh Shemal Shah knows how to judge, right? In verse 21, hold on. In verse 20, yeah, I started 20. It says verse 20. For there are, for there, for there be many that perish in this life because they despise the law of the power that is set before them. So it's best for them to perish than not uphold. It's best for Yahweh Shemal Shah to kill them than to not uphold the law. So that's how the angel is explaining it to him. He said, look, it's best for them to die than Yahweh Shem Shah not hold the law. So he know how to judge, right? It says, uh, verse 21, for the power have given straight commandments to such as come that they should do to live even as they came and what they should observe to avoid punishment, right? Verse 22, nevertheless, they did not, they did not, nevertheless, they were not obedient unto him, but spake against him and imagined vain things. Verse 23, and deceived themselves by their, by their wicked deeds and said of the Most High that he is not and knoweth not his way. 
So they disregarded the word of Yahweh Bashim al Shah came, became rebellious and waged war against Yahweh Bashim al Shah and his word, right? Two thirds, verse 24. But his law have they despised and denied his covenant and his statutes have they not been faithful and have not performed his works. Verse 25, and therefore Ezra, for the empty are the empty things and for the full are, are the full things. Verse 26, behold, the time shall come that these tokens, mean these signs, which I have told thee shall come to pass and the bride shall appear and she coming forth shall be seen that now is withdrawn from the earth and whosoever is delivered from, from the four said evils shall see my wonders. So I read all that to let you see this is the battle this is the battle that when you wake up to this truth, you have to, you have to face as the second Adamite, okay? Which is an Israelite, but it's the second Adamite, which is spiritual. The first Adamite is natural. Even though uh, the first Adamites, which are Israelites, are catching hell and in a confused state, the second Adamite is catching hell, but they understand what's going on, but they balance between the, the, the they balance, when you repent, you balance between that first Adamite and that second Adamite. It's a battle, right? Okay? So that's what happens when you repent, right? You gotta go through this narrow path in order to see. You gotta go through this narrow path in order to See the kingdom and be delivered, right? Okay? So that's my point of showing you Negro Latinos and Native Americans, that's what it is when you repent, man. Right? This is Romans. I'm finna go to the Romans, the seventh chapter, right? And I'm finna, I'm finna get something that Paul said, right? But I'm finna read it. I'm finna jump back and forth. Romans chapter seven. Romans chapter 7 verse 14. I'm finna jump back and forth, right? I'm finna jump back and forth. Y'all let me get some get some more tea. You know what I'm saying? I'm finna jump back and forth with the different translations in the King James Bible and show you uh, the condition of when you are change and believe in Yahweh Bashim al shot and that first Adam uh, spirit is uh no when you are changing you believe in Yahweh Bashim al shot and you got that second Adam spirit but that first Adam is still around in your mind it's a battle so I'm going to show you what Paul was speaking on concerning that Okay, the war between the first Adam and the second Adam, right? I'm gonna read it for you in a different translation. So I'm gonna jump around so y'all bear with me, right? This is uh, Romans chapter seven, verse 14. It says, this is King James Version. For now, for, for we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, soul under sin, right? I read that again. It's the King James Version, right? For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. That's Paul speaking. Now I'm finna get the new, new international version. It says, we know that the law is spiritual, but I am unspiritual, sold as a slave to sin. This is the, uh, I'm gonna jump around. This is the new King James Version. 
For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. Now I want to go to the Amplified, right? I want to go to the Amplified. This is the Amplified Bible. We know that the law is spiritual, but I am a creature of the flesh, right? Worldly, self-reliant, carnal, and unspiritual, sold into slavery to sin and serving under its control. So Paul is telling you right there, even though he believed in Yahweh Bashim Shai, it's still a battle, right? It's still a battle, right? He's telling you, right? So I read that again, uh, the King James Version in Romans chapter 7, verse 14. It's the King James Version. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. Verse 15, King James Version. For that, for that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that I do. Now we're going to the different translation, the New International Trend, the New International Version, right? It says, I do not un I do I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do, but what I hate, I do. So Paul is telling you he wanna keep the law. He wanna do what's right. Right? He telling you, right? But he can't fully keep the glory of Yahweh Shemel Shah and he doing what he and he doing things that he hate, right? So that's what Paul is saying. I mean, that's what he's saying. So it's a war. Okay? That was the I read that new international version again. It says, I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do it. Alright? This is the uh let me see. Alright, this is an amplified version. It says, uh, for I do not understand my own actions. I am baffled and bewildered by them. I do I I do not practice what I want to do. But I am doing the very thing I hate and yielding to my human nature by worldliness, my sinful capacity, man. So Paul is telling you it's a battle, man. He's telling you. He battling between the first Adam and the second Adam, man. Okay? That's what happens when you repent. It's a battle, man. This is a, and walking that narrow path, you gotta dodge all these people. <laughs> you gotta dodge two thirds, man. You gotta dodge. You gotta dodge everything and continue on the course, and continually and continue to examine yourself to make sure you're on the right path because it's a battle everywhere, man. It's a battle in the world and it's a battle within your mind, man.